Oh, there we go. Oh, it hasn't started yet. <laughs> We're good. Almost. Almost. Should start the counting in a second here. I got 20 seconds deep on mine. Oh, fuck. Well, I'm welcome to the Pro- the Thinking Man Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host. Fucking one of the hosts, one of the three hosts, uh, Rusty, and I'm here with one of the other co-hosts. We have Gee, just putting out the facts over here. We've uh, we got caught off guard. Uh, we're once again raw this week, and um, I'm having to hit some buttons like switches on a on a low rider there, and they're just not hitting on time on uh, both sides. So. We're kind of having some issues, but hopefully we'll uh, be going good. And hopefully at some point today, Rob will be coming back in and doing a run-in on whatever segment we're running on, and we'll give some analyzation, his view, his thoughts, his two cents. Um, yeah, and uh, I, we got a lot to pack into the show because I got some fun facts on the topic I want to throw out there today, and then it's uh, quite a few of them, and uh, it's actually about Hell in a Cell. So uh, let's get down to it. How was your week? I know you went to a, an indie show. Is that correct? I went. Yeah, I guess I went to two. I went to one on Friday night. It was a Twitch, Twitch only uh, show. Like four matches, I think. And uh, I sat in the crowd for that one. Just sort of uh, saw what was going on, and then on Saturday night I had a show. Uh, Devotion Championship Wrestling in Salt Lake City, Utah. It was uh, apparently it's in not a good part of town, but I mean, it's Salt Lake City. How bad does it get? It's apparently I had a, a Lyft driver earlier in the day. He had tell me that that's where you go to get hookers and drugs. It was a mm. Yeah, he was a pretty knowledgeable guy. He was a social worker, I guess, for like 30 years. So he knows oh, okay. all. So I was like, oh. And I was like, okay, well. And so for that day, before I got there, I had my car keys, and I dropped them into the garbage can in front of the arena where the Utah Jazz play, and there was a playoff game going on that day. And so there were people starting to show up. And so I thought maybe I just dropped it on sort of the top part of the trash can. But, I mean, this is one of those big trash cans in front of a place, you know, out of, out of a marina or, you know, downtown. Uh, so I ended up starting, like, pulling shit out of the garbage can, like pulling every, almost every single thing out of the garbage can, putting it on the ground, and... Eventually, I found my kids, and I, I held them up, like, yes, I found them. <laughs> <laughs> like, everyone saw me digging through the trash, but nobody saw me actually find my keys. So then, I'm covered up to my, like, past my elbows in garbage juice. So I go up <laughs> to, oh. I'm like, can I go in? You guys give a bathroom I can use. And they're like, well, we can't really do that. I'm like, well, like, look, I just fucking stuck my arms through the garbage, like, and I have to go and, like, shake everyone's hand when I get to the show. So, uh, so they let me in and they wash up. And so I end up going to the show. And I, I enjoyed it. I was, I was pretty impressed. It was nice. Actually, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I was doing the, uh, Ringside camera, so I I don't know, man. I mean, I wasn't watching and watching because I was recording, so it was only really what I kind of got. I was in the zone, and I I hope I don't like end up on the camera because I'm dressed like a fucking asshole. I'm like wearing fucking zubas and shit, and uh, like. You know, I'm, I'm far from 
you know, being the, the black guy that you're supposed to be like, like you are, and, and, like <laughs> what you went through when you're everyday retired is good for someone who is, uh, it, like recording shit. Like you don't want a guy wearing bright colors holding the camera. Yeah, no, because I mean, we did production together and helping, uh, with the production of the cameras and stuff at the DOA shows. And we always got great compliments by the crew there when we did it for our mom. We always knew how to put people in the in the the camera properly, you know. And uh, I did once in a while do the one thing you don't like, you despise. So when they're punching, like going in a little bit more with it, you know. Yeah. But yeah, you know, the cameraman makes you fucking dizzy after a while, like doing that. But. Where I made my mark uh, with DOA doing the camera work for them um, had to be during that fucking cage match with the Blanchards oh. involved in it and gigged himself too hard. He was bleeding everywhere. You could just smell the blood in the armory. And uh, I loved every fucking moment of that. I remember I got put in the cage to do the camera, and I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, you're going in. I was like, who fucking voted me in for this? And they was like, oh, yeah, you do great work, man. You go on. Next thing I know, the door is being closed and locked, and I was fucking going, what am I doing? Then we got uh, What's-His-Face doing the photography. Forgot his name. Good guy. Um, he's ducking behind me, crouching in the corner by the ring in the cage, as there's, like, thumbtacks and fucking glass flying here. But he looked like a 70s dude with glasses on, photography guy. Uh, uh, the guy that would get, hangs out with Gary. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, what's his name? The big, tall, red-haired guy. Uh, I forgot. Now it'll come to me. It wasn't Bob. Was it Bob? Is it Bob? Or, I feel like it's Bob. Yeah, it's it might Bob. have been Bob. There's a couple of Bobs. There's Bobs in the crowd, right, that sat and always, like, sat there with the kids. Bob, who visited me and then the kids sitting there, and then there was uh, Bob, the photographer. Yeah. Yeah. And then Bob. Was, the other Bob. Okay, man. Fuck that. That was always a fun dude to talk to. Uh, I always like that guy. I can't think of what his last name is, but uh, the photographer? No, no, no. He he was. I, I talked with him, but I really enjoyed talking with the other Bob. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he fought cancer not like not too long ago. I think he won, and got through it, and stuff. Holy shit! Like Holy shit! Something. He got sick for a while. I might completely be wrong, not wishing on anyone, but I think he was sick for all, but he was a great guy with the kids, and that's why I'm, I was asking you the other day about the DOA shows, because I want to go, not just see, you know, the wrestlers there and everybody, but also some of the fans. Some of those fans are staples, man. Dude, like, I don't know what happened to fucking Mary Wyndham. I, I, I have no clue if she's still alive or not. Uh, so, to give context, there was this woman... I don't know if she's going to be a listener to this this show, but if she's dead, she's probably not listening. So she was a pretty large woman. Like, she had the, uh, the Barry Wyndham kind of uh, hairy, hairy from <laughs> uh, Dumb and Dumber kind of haircut. And, <laughs> man, she'd always say like crazy. Going, huh? Like, and my sister, like, that was her. She came to that show the, when you, me, and um, Andrew, and my oh, sister went to show. Yeah, yeah, the fans bring the weapons match. And yeah, I mean, looked at a picture. Oh, what? Just saw a picture of that the other day. Really? Yeah, it's just three of us standing there with the weapons in our hand before we went into the show. Yeah, Sign yeah. it, baseball bat, sledgehammer, shovel, chain. But we're all just holding it and taking it inside so the rest of us could use it. Dude, yeah. And the, what my sister remembers the thing the most was fucking Mary Wyndham of, of all fucking. <laughs> they, there's a fucking. Fans being the weapons match, and the thing she, like, remembers the most is... What I don't thinking. know if she, she played the part her, or she was serious, or if she was some of these fucking gimmick, dude. I don't know. It, it's She's a character. More of a character yeah. sometimes yeah. than a couple of the wrestlers that came through there. She's fucking funny, man. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, shit. Let's get into some topics. Um, I'll just make this one quick. Did you watch any of the UFC this week? Negative. All right. Good show. It was a great show. Um, I, I love watching it now, especially because the crowd's back. The crowd is full of energy there, fucking full of life. If anybody's going to watch it and grab some highlights, watch the Romero fight. Um, an outstanding, standing fight. It was the co-main event. It's an emotional win at the end. He is the first Mexican champion, or Mexican-born champion. Um, it's, it's, it was a great, great finish to the fight. And the sportsmanship on this fight is off the chart at the end. It was amazing. Um, the main main event out of the show is the Adesanya versus, um, oh, I forgot his name. I shouldn't. I think his name's like Martin or something like that. Ventero or something like that. It was what it was. A showboat show. Izzy did his stuff again where he's being cocky, kind of like uh, Anderson Silva kind of a fighter. And it was what it was. But that was just a UFC recap. I know it's all about wrestling here, but I do like all uh, combative sports stuff, so I thought I'd throw that out there. And then uh, we'll just get right into it from here. Samoa Joe being rehired. So he got fired how long ago? Was it a week, two weeks ago? Uh, no, I don't know. It's closer to a month now. Because he was on the first lot of guys, remember? No, it's a couple months now. He was one of the first wave to go. Oh. Because Braun Strowman, Alice Black, and all them were the last ones to come out of there. So do you think that they had a plan for him already, like, to go? I don't see fired the guys that were getting, they thought in their eyes, paid too much, and then they were giving them the option, hey, go take a vacation, do what you want to do, and if you like, we're going to cut your pay, put you back on contract, and bring you back. (laughs) And all in all, slap to the talent, but then again, you're getting your job back, kind of rebuilding your I guess investment and your worth into yourself is the best way to say it. So I would just, yeah, I guess that's the best way to sum it up. My thing is, and you know I've always said this, it's a Taz mirrored career. It's a what? It's a Taz mirrored career. A Taz they brought, Taz, they brought Taz in the same way they brought Joe in, and they just buried him, put him on a commentator shit, and then that's all he's ever been, and it's – He's got the same stature, kind of, to me. The, and yeah. I think Joe's a badass. I think Taz in his prime was a badass. Now Taz comes off as Joe Pesci to me. <laughs> you know, and I hopefully he doesn't fucking hear this because he's one guy that can be intimidated, I'm sure, when he gets pissed off with that Brooklyn Hook accent there. Um, But, um, yeah, man. I don't know. I guess here's the downside of it, and I was going to bring – no, it's actually with this topic. I believe that I put it in there. Yeah, well, no, it's with it. It's um, Regal. I think he's taking Regal's place as the general manager on NXT. And we just – it's more of an ROH kind of a show, bringing that feel into it. Well, I mean – it was it was ROH fucking what like four or five years ago? I guess it's longer than yeah. that now. Yeah, and about they, eight now. With oh, Joe yeah. and Steen and Tyler, or is it Tyler Black? Is that was his name? Yeah. And then uh, yeah. Kalisto. Like you yeah. know, it goes yeah. with that like I could see if yeah. Joe takes over, I could see Cesaro. What? I can see Cesaro dropping down to NXT if Joe's over. Giving those guys more of a shot in the biz, you know? Because NXT is really not the, the off-brand or the down-brand anymore. It might be a startup for the younger guys. So that's where a better shot you get started up. But it's not like a, I don't know, your developmental show anymore. It's not really like that. It's a main show. I mean, they just had a pay-per-view on Sunday. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the uh, In Your House. With Todd fucking Pettengill, buddy. Man, that's fucking cool as shit. That Dude. guy, uh, I think old. he's kind of like a radio DJ in New York or Connecticut or something. Yeah. 
He was before he went on WWF when it was called that. Then he left and he continued to do it. I want to say he might have been doing it while he was there. And that's why he went parted ways because the obligations just became too much together. And he just picked the radio over to thing I'm sure because of traveling. So and he's been doing that ever since. And they brought him back for this. And I just saw an interview and he wants to come back and do more NXT shows. Didn't say WWE shows, NXT show. I think he knows the politics. The further and deeper you go into WWE, you're more tied down. That's why Bruce yeah. Pritt has yeah. no fucking life whatsoever. Vince McMahon is inside of his body all day long, just fucking puppeteering. It's always weird <laughs> on the fucking uh, on the show, and he's like, "Hold on," and then it's like, <laughs> and then yeah. it's like that's gotta be fucking Connor's just like, "Oh god, here we go again." It's going to probably be like 45 minute phone call or some shit. Like, dude, man, it's. Well, I like the commitment. Now. I mean, they get they get their content out there. That's that's what's really, really invested me and really inspired me to get out there. And I know Conrad's inspired a lot of wrestling podcasters to get out there. And yeah, he uh, gives you no excuses. That guy's got, what, six podcasts going on. He, that guy's amazing out there. He's a fucking. Um, he's a, Job. Yeah. So with the NXT show, talking about Samoa Joe going back, with the pay per view over the weekend, they brought back the million dollar belt. All right. So why? <laughs> so that's the thing. There is. It was between LA Knight, which was AKA Eli Drake, and then it was against Cameron Grimes. Man, the thing with characters. Yeah. Cameron Grimes uh, and then Velveteen Dream, guys like that who used to be there, those gimmicks only go that far because they're too goofy, too silly to get over on the main roster. Hold on, hold on a minute. Hold on. At what Rose? about No Way Jose? He's gone. Oh, I know. But, I mean, that, that got over in the, on the main roster for at least, like, three or four shows, and they did it for two or three years. So what you're saying is, at this point, you now want to add a third wheel to the saga of now finding No Way Jose fans? Because I don't see... The only reason why motherfuckers jumped up in that crowd is because it was goofy with the fiesta. There was no way people were like, dude, when's No Way Jose coming on the card? I don't want to miss that shit. Like, you know that never happened. Unless it was his mom there, his dad, maybe. And dude, his name was No Way Jose. Like, how long is that going to last? You know, that's like, yeah. you know, that's the fucking death sentence of a name. And what was the other guy, Rose? Some Rose before Adam that? Rose. I just saw a picture of that guy the, uh, yesterday. Totally different looking dude. Gray beard, more bulked up now. It is. Oh. Yeah, look up a picture of Adam Rose, man, like now. It is totally different. Oh. Uh, on a sadder note, though, on a sadder note. All right, so Adam Rose all bulked up, gray beard, looking good and shit. Charlie Haas, man. I saw, this is why I saw a picture of Adam Rose. I saw this guy who looked like a white fucking uh, Flavor Flav. And I was like, what the hell, dude? Who is this guy? Kind of looks familiar. Fucking Charlie Haas. He looks sick as fuck, dude. I don't know what's going on. It's been in the last year. I just saw a picture of him. He just, he's got, remember Jackie Gaden he was married to? Yeah. He had four, or Jackie Gaden. She was in wrestling as well the same time as Charlie Haas came in. They got together then. They've had four kids. Guys, I'm like a soap opera out there. I know all their stupid, stupid fucking business. So I can throw that out there for everybody. If anybody ever wants to know, they got four kids. We're married about 14 years, 16 years, somewhere in there. Just got divorced in December 2020, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's I, – hopefully it's not an addiction. This looks really sick and run down, man. I don't know. Well, he had his brother. They both came in at the same time, and then his brother died right when they – before they hit. Like, um, they were, like, just about to get signed, I think. And then, yeah, his brother died. And so then Charlie came up, and that's why he teamed with Shelton Benjamin. Uh, okay, so they would have been a tag team then if he wouldn't have passed away, probably, then. So, I'm pretty sure. Um, That's great. And another thing, little side note. So, at the show, one of the guys got a lot of his training from New Jack. 
Um, oh, shit. And so they did a fucking, they did a 10-bell thing, man. Dude, man, I don't know how many more 10-bells I can oh. hear, man. It's, it's always hard, man. But I'm, I love I love the 10-bell. Like, it's one of the coolest things. But, man, they're fucking... It gets gets me like a lot, man. It, it's a hard one every time. Um, yeah, especially someone you know, man. I, I don't, I don't know him, but um. Oh, dude, yeah. just. I mean, I can be a dick of wrestling and all the characters and everything like that, but every single time, I mean, every character and every gimmick has its place in wrestling, and it's a, it's a puzzle piece. And maybe without a puzzle, you might not get a superstar that we've had before. <laughs> And, yeah, man, there's times, I mean, we've grown up with this for 30 years. I mean, whether it's a local wrestler to a main star, it hurts every time. Because then you start doing the what-ifs if they didn't pass away, which we've talked about. Or, you know, just could someone have changed something, you know, all the way from Eddie passing and Benoit tragedy to, you know, questions of how some wrestlers died back in the 80s was some of them maybe being murders, saying they were overdoses. It's always sad, man. And yeah, that 10 bell, they do it for them. And it's just, your head goes down, you know that that, that bell isn't going to ring for them anymore. And it's, it's a sad fucking moment, man. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's Portland for Piper when they did the show what? here. So when they did the show, the one for Piper. Oh, fuck, dude. At the WWE show? Yeah, is that the what I don't know if it was Rose Garden still or going into the Moto Center, whatever they want to call it here these days. Right. But yeah, I went to that right. show and they put the camera on me. I don't think it's live on TV because they do so many cuts and everything like that. But dude, I am crying like a baby. And I'm just like on the big screen, I'm like, this I'm like, No, no, don't catch me and with the whole entire family, we're on like it's a smackdown show. We're on it most of the night in the background. Especially when Seth's on there, but uh yeah, man, it's 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 always a sad thing to have to hear those ten bells, unless it's a a time old timer that's lived all the way eighties, nineties, and they've lived a big full life, and then it's more of a a very very proud moment. But it's yeah, always bad. But let's yeah, get back to more yeah, positive. Yeah, that's really know about, that's what is your take on it? Back in the day, what did you think about and what it's worth to matches, the careers? No, uh, the million dollar bell. A million dollar bell. Well, I guess it was because that uh, I just saw a thing on this uh, that was it. Uh, Fuck, Warrior didn't want to drop it, uh, drop the title, or Honk didn't want to drop the title. Uh, it was it was something to do with Honky Tonk and uh, Ultimate Warrior and Hogan, and for some reason, like at WrestleMania four, DiBiase was supposed to win the belt instead of Macho. So what happened was whatever the fuck I don't remember. I just I just heard this story less than a week ago. And so they had to create the million dollar belt just so he'd have a belt because I don't know. I mean, it, he's one guy that could have had a good run as champion. Yeah. Um, it would look good with the black and gold suit he always wore most of the time. Yeah. And I'm, but I mean, the million dollar belt looked good like that too. But then, I mean, that's the thing also that only has this fucking, this time. Like, it only has. A shelf life. It has a uh a, a no way Jose shelf life. But here it is fucking thirty years later. Th- probably more more than thirty years later. Well Austin uh, I think was the last one to have it. When he was a ringmaster. Yeah. I think he was yeah. the last one to have it. And then uh but yeah, I mean, there's there's no rest there's no superstars or any wrestler that's coming into the business going yeah, I've always dreamed of being the million dollar champion. Like, it's not something you're going to hear him say, so it's just a fuck off belt. And I think it was more giving Ted that belt was more of a roadblock for him to never have any other title shots because he had a title. 
So he yeah. never really had an IC yeah. one. He never had the world title. I mean, I only, I mean, he was very limited. And if you really break Ted's gimmick down, he had a lot to it. One of the things couldn't fly today is having the black bodyguard, but it was pretty much his slave, you know, Virgil. You had the million dollar man gimmick. You had the belt with it. I mean, all in Virgil. Well, and at that summer slam, I was just watching, whatever the fuck I was watching, I'm watching some good shit lately, apparently, about wrestling. But, uh, and also at the summer slam, when he's working Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire goes missing, and someone's buying it, Sapphire, all these extravagant gifts and shit. And so oh, yeah. Buying fucking Sapphire. So he has Sapphire and Virgil there. Just like, yeah, that probably would not fly today, man. Uh, I mean, oh. it could, it could have just been a coincidence that they happen to be two black people, but maybe it wasn't. I mean, nowadays, I mean, it could coincidentally be two black people, but I don't think people would see that as a coincidence now. And people, like, someone would say something if that were to happen yeah. now. That would be someone in, you know, public relations or HR or social justice warrior is going to come by and be like, yeah, There's that, but By doing that and knowing how the world is right now, if you were to do that, then you know exactly what you're doing and how you're trying to get it over at this point, too. So, I mean, if we weren't living in the PC area and you're trying to do that, you might not trying to be pushing that agenda. But, yeah, it's it's it'll be negative on both sides, definitely. Yeah. Um, I remember Jake, I don't think Jake ever won it from him, but I remember he took the belt uh, and he put it in the bag with Damien. Uh, well, we're so, going to be getting to that a little bit later, by the way. Because oh, I got yeah. something funny I found out over a couple documentaries and some shows about what that snake used to carry with him. Yeah. Dark cocaine. <laughs> but we'll get to that because I got another one about Frankie. That's so then, good. Uh, Matilda. We'll be bringing those up in a couple topics. Um, but yeah, the belt. Fuck it, dude. Like, I don't want to see it. It was like the smoking skull belt. I know that was war, more of the world champion belt because he kind of just hybrided it, but nobody else could have it. It was kind of like the Brahma Bull belt that they were going to have make a run. It was the same. Only The Rock can have it. Only Stone Cold can have it. Only DiBiase can have it. You know, I don't know. There's They can't be doing that shit with belts. And that goes into my next one is they're bringing in the six-man tag belts. I wrote it I down here, the tag belts. The six-man tag belts, it sounds like, to AEW. I love it. I love it so much. I love the six man tag belt. What? I don't think you should have the tag belts at that point then. It is totally different match. Totally different match. It was like what they were doing in was that R O H when they were doing the they had the six man Yeah, they had the six man, yeah. And shit with like, you know, the, the young bucks and shit. So I mean they're and they're bringing all that back and but dude, I love like it has that old kind of prestige, but I mean, it's going to be new, doing all sorts of shit, different shit. But I mean, those old like six man tag matches that would be the main events at the Portland Sports Arena. You know, there's some big thing, and it's like then. And I hope they do two out of three falls. If they do six man or three, you know, whatever the trios uh, tag matches, like. Have two out of three falls. I think that'd be pretty fucking cool, man. I think that'd be a good way. And it's like, it's an easy main event, and it doesn't have to have a bunch of meaning to it. It can kind of be, I mean, it could be, a, and it could also be a great way to put a bunch of stories together and get a bunch of stories really lifted with tiny intricate things that kind of get put into the match that you will pick up on later and be like, oh, that's why that was happening. Like someone's going to turn or some shit. But I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm for it. I'm for it. I'm, I'm pretty excited to hear it. But, I mean, the tag belts, like, but, yeah, I guess I, I'm with you on that. Which I, I see what you're saying with the tag belts because then who would be in the – I mean, like, obviously at some point, 
someone's going to have both the tag belts and the trio belts. I don't know who it will be, but I guess what I see happening is maybe Kenny will make the Bucks, and kind of like what Kenny's doing now with all the belts, is that they'll end up getting the trio belts, they'll have the world title, they already have the tag titles, and they'll, they'll just be dripping in gold. All that stupid shit. But it just gives no worth to the belts. Like, back in the day, you had four belts in the WWF. You had the tag, the world, and the IC. And I love that. The tag belts are worth so much. The IC, like, you knew once someone got the IC, what was about to happen next. They were going to yeah. drop it and go and get the fucking world title. You know, or the heavyweight title, whatever the fuck you want to call it at the time. I know it changes back and forth depending on how many belts they have. And that's the thing. Like, I mean, you run it down just on AEW, minus the woman's belt, because they just have the woman's title right now, right? They don't have woman's tags, because that's Impact now in WWE. So, you got the TNT title, you got the world title, now you got the tag title, now you're gonna, you got the FTW. And Which then is worth, another worthless one. Yeah, like, I don't get why we have that belt. That's just a prop at this point. So, yeah, I mean, they're props, but they can give the wrestler value more. But that's where it turns into the saying, like, does the belt make the wrestler or does the wrestler make the belt? Right. Right. Well, I think that having, I don't know, like, yeah, you don't really need the belt to get over, but I mean, I can sure. Sure, I know, man. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, having that many belts where everyone's a fucking champion, it's like the participation trophy. Uh, yeah. almost, almost almost everyone can list that they've been some sort of champion at one point in the company they're in. And that's kind of bullshit. So I'm, I'm with you on that. Like, I did really like the, the prestige of having just those – Four belts, and the women's belt, I guess, was gone during that time. Like, I think, well, like, it was the Rock and Robin had it, and then Moolah maybe had it again, and then they retired it, maybe, and brought it back. Yeah, no, and, they brought it back when she was going against, oh, uh, man, why did she we just talk about it the other week? Um, it will come to me in a moment. But, yeah, they brought it back, like, now there's it's worth some, but now there's two of them in the WWE. I feel like it'd be way more prestigious if they put the two belts together and just had one and had the. I mean, the way I look, if you're a champ, you need to be doing the time traveling. You're made the champ for a reason because they trust you. So start making both shows. Like start doing that kind of stuff. You yeah. know, make it cool. Like I don't, I don't know. know. It's too much. Like, like you were talking about WrestleMania four. That was a tournament for one championship, right? Back in our day. Now we have a pay per view called. It got vacated because of the uh, Andre winning the title and giving it to. Um, or DiBiase bought it from him. So. That's true. So they ended up vacating the title and that's why they had the tournament for it. Uh, and I mean, if DiBiase won, I mean, that would have been a great story. I mean, Macho winning, winning it's a fucking great story. Yeah, that was cool. I like WrestleMania yeah. 4 is one of my favorites, man. Trump Dude, Plaza. So much. Or Trump or whatever. The, it was Trump's building. But, um, yeah, man, oh, I don't know. It would be interesting to see the trio belt. Yeah, but, yeah, I do understand. I mean, there's, yeah, too many belts. I, I'd be happy. I think every company should have one, yeah, one main belt, one – Equivalent of intercontinental tag belts, and then a women's belts, women's tag belts. But I mean, there's not enough women. Then we go back to the if it's an all women show, it's a fucking pervert show for the yeah. most part. <laughs> what you gonna yeah. do? It, it sells, so, so earlier, yeah, I don't know, man. It's we'll see over time because I know there's rumors that uh. WWE might be changing some belt rounds um, and all that good stuff. Oh, there's the music going off. I feel like the Ultimate War music will start pumping at this point. <laughs> there is. Oh, he's he's flying to the moon, people. He's flying to the moon. Well, oh, Zach, 
Sexy shirt, man. Sexy shirt. I planted it. I planted it. Shit, man. I, I, feel, I feel out of it not being from Detroit here, man. Uh, you got to jump on the Tiger Train. Not the Tiger King Train, obviously. I never watched that, by the way. No, um, we should watch that. I didn't watch no. it either. I, I want to. I, I'm, oh, I'm going to watch it at some point. I it's, I feel like it's one of those things like you have to watch it, Star Wars. They're they're pretty much on the same level. It's like Star Wars and Tiger King. They're like two things that you need to watch if you're a, a human in the United States. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Rob, we were just talking about the trio belt coming along. Um, we're talking. I feel like there's just too many damn belts these days. There's too many. He's for the trio belt. I will be more for the tree or the six man tags if there wasn't so many belts. Hey, it's so let's hey, get your about, your take about, on it. It's all about participation <laughs> trophies, man. Gotta have yep. everybody's gotta have one. That was exactly what I said. I said the same thing. It's the participation trophies, man. There's not many wrestlers on the roster who haven't won at least some belts. Yeah. Does it twenty four seven? Is that still around? Yeah, but it's just there's so much content on these shows and the riffraff and the trying to bring back people now that we fired and all that. The, that belt's getting buried because of all that kind of nonsense going on. No, so I'm a fan of, of the uh, six-man tag style belts. Um, can't believe Rusty's upside down. Holy shit. Oh, uh, no, I know. You're um, I'm, I'm busy, man. I'm like floating up here in my AMC rocket. <laughs> but, um, no, I, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind the whole uh, the whole six man tag thing. I think for me personally, um, I was very excited for AEW when they talked about how they were going to do rankings and all this stuff. Like I remember growing up, like you you like, sit side by side with one of your friends and you're like, all right, here's my top ten wrestlers, or you know, or even when the PWI you know, um, annual came out. You'd be like, oh, where are they ranked and all this stuff. So the six-man tag to me would provide an opportunity for another set of rankings for another set of wrestlers. Because ultimately, what what are these guys fighting for, right? I mean, let's. I'm putting on my, my tinfoil hat and talking about wrestling like it's real for a minute, okay? So what are they out there fighting for as opposed to just coming on and having a storyline where, you know, this guy – um, this guy doesn't like this guy because they bump shoulders in the back area, and now they're going to go out and wrestle. Uh, so give them something to fight for. If it's a six-man tag belt, trio belt, you know, whatever, sure, okay. So that, But group every guy into a classification in which they're wrestling for something. Similar to the MMA world, right? UFC has different weight classes, right? So you're ultimately fighting for a prize. Where in wrestling... You're just kind of out there fighting for your life, right? You're looking to keep a job and not get let go. Um, your spot. So, yeah, so give them something. I'm cool with I that. Hope they, I don't wrestle for a title, and I had some title matches, and I held a, a title that was imaginary. Um, but I was always out there to just, you know, beat people up, just – yeah. Go out there and like I was. I was never about the title. I'll, I'll tell Wait. you what. Here's here's an example. Um, here's show how old I am though. Oh. Does anybody remember the juicer? Dude, yeah, the crazy eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. I think he was like, he was way out there. Um, but he was Jack the Yeah, was it yeah. Jack the Lane or something? Like that? Oh, that juicer. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were talking about fucking Art Bar nope. and WCW. No, nope. nope. the WCW oh, version. I saw the old guy, and uh, Jim Carrey did gets on him on a, on a living color. Uh, I think that was the case, yeah. Yeah. I remember him okay. um, from house shows, and I just thought he was, like, the most captivating wrestler at a house show. I was like, oh, this guy's, this guy's over. But now that we're in a mainstream media, yeah. It, there's got to be something for it. They've got to have something that they're going for. Or next thing you know, they just get let go. Yeah. 
know, I mean, Aleister Black, he had a big following. You know, everybody's like Aleister Black. And maybe the Vega thing had a little bit to do with it. Who knows? Um, we know there's politics that he played into all this. But ultimately, when, when he moved up from NXT to the, the big roster, it was like there was nothing for him. There was there there was no cult following for him. There was no, I'm not comparing the juicer to Aleister Black. But, you know, if you went to a house show and Aleister Black was there, you'd be like, oh, That's a fucking commercial right there. Alistair Black using a juicer to stall, like, Black using it through the juice. <laughs> this fades yeah. to Black yeah. afterward. Yeah. You don't know what's in it. Oh, man. Um, well, let's get to the next topic, and that was uh, what I got to find out through some uh, horrible Dark Side of the Ring episodes. It, like we talked about last week, just left me feel like i got to take a shower after these shows. But let's talk about the animals in wrestling. Who was your favorite animal? And I'm not not George, but I'm talking about whether it's Damien, Frankie, Matilda. Who was your favorite animal that came out of the superstar? Matilda, no doubt. Matilda. I'm, What'd you got? I, I, I was a little fucking kid. Like I saw a dude with a bulldog, and I always wanted a bulldog. And you had a bulldog. I had a bulldog, man. Yeah, my baby. I, so I got to go with. I gotta go with Damien. That just scared the crap out of me when he bit Macho. That was like, oh, holy crap! This is real. This is real. So, fu- so fun facts, right? I'm sitting here listening to the show, so I got to find out that Coco Beware hated Frankie, could not stand that damn bird, had to travel with him. <laughs> then on top of that, I got to find out rumor still. I haven't confirmed this, and we talked about this that Dynamite, the piece of shit, fucking was pumping up Matilda with steroids. Yeah, was injecting Man, I thought, as a lamb. I thought you were a big Dynamite Kid fan. No, I dropped that last week after watching oh, that Dark Side of the I'm good, man. I don't want. Okay, all right. I've been bought that guy. Seventy dollar figure. Yeah, dude, I'm good. That I mean, just craziness, craziness. And yeah, he might have been innovative. So was Benoit, but that those guys. But yeah, sticking steroids in your dog, and then get to the next one, which would be Damien, whatever snake he had at the time. He was taking a jar of cocaine, putting it in the bag with a snake, having a snake wrap around it, and that's how they would get through customs or anywhere through the airport because no one wanted to check the bag with a snake. I love so they put all their drugs in there to get through the airports for the guys. It's because brilliant. It's brilliant. It's crazy. And they, they talk about stuff on their shows now like it's no problem. But I'm like, but no, what got me was the Matilda one. I was, It was just, I was such a... I mean, I had Maggie, my bulldog. I was such a Matilda fan, especially when she chased Bobby. And uh, that's one of the most memorable things. By the way, Bobby is a new shelf former at Target in that uh, weasel outfit. Really? So, I've been selling them for 10 bucks a piece on claim sales on Threadhead's website. Oh, man. It's just, there's like 20 of them at the Target down the road and nothing else. Nothing else right now. It's sad. Um but, yeah, I was always a big Matilda fan. Um, I know that they did the Kimono Dragon. Um, mm. We did always talk about Pepper, Al Snow's dog. That was a horrible segment, by the way, when Bossman fed Pepper or went to people or Al Snow, whatever it was. Wait, so hold on, hold on. What about the Mr. Fuji thing where he fed someone's dog to someone? Oh, see, now, is that just a bunch of BS? Is that just a legend story where he did that? I, I I wasn't there. Oh, that's just horrible and dark. It, it really is. It's just gross and dark if he did that. Maybe it's I, his culture, you know, but back in the day, but that was just gross. I was watching that. Was dog. Dog is good shit, man. No one needs to be eating a dog. We can find other things to eat. It, it was a thing about... Let's get on to a lighter note since we're talking about back in the day and our childhoods kind of. Let's talk about toys. What was your favorite wrestling toy that you bought at maybe Toys R Us? Rest in peace. Um, I think, like, my thing always pissed me off. I always wanted this magazine because they had the Hitman glasses in it, and everybody would go in the store and stealing the Hitman glasses out the plastic baggy sealed magazine. Fucking pissed me off. You guys yeah, remember yeah, the yeah, toys, yeah, wrestling yeah. buddies? Um, um. Dude, I don't know, man. The wrestling buddy, I never had that, and I was always jealous of everyone who had that. I remember right. my buddy, uh, Michael, he had uh, he had the Ultimate Warrior one. 
And I won the Hogan vote. Warrior, DiBiase, and Jake the Snake. And Hogan? Yeah, Hogan. There's that one. Um, but, dude, yeah, like, I wanted one of those bad, man. And, wait, didn't I give you one? Didn't I give you? We got the plush Hogan that you gave the kids. But it, it wasn't the... It wasn't the was, wrestling buddy where it's just the two sewed up pieces of material with stuffing in it that has the printed stuff on there. They yeah. redid them now with Tina and all those guys. But one of the ones I wanted to talk about that was as dangerous as all hell was the LOD pads. You could buy these things at the wrestling magazine, big black spikes on them. You can't tell me Big Brothers didn't put this on, did some frog splashes off the couch to their little brothers. I would. Well, you, like, you could you buy, like, like the actual shoulder pad, not the toys. Yeah, you didn't ever see these. These are little red plastic was, like, I mean, fit for kids. And they you could foam? No, man, no. Now I feel like I'm dreaming this up. Now you guys got me questioning my reality here. Well, I, know I these assume were they were foam, but, you know, we're talking about you know, we're talking about the millennial. 80s, though, when we were recalling every toy in the market at one the point because either Pepsi gave you cancer or, like, it was crazy. Yeah, I'm going to let you go here. Um, but, yeah, no, I was just sitting there reminiscing the other day, talking to my kids about the wrestling toys and the ones that we have. And now it's – I feel like they're more marketed to collectors because the guys that grew up with the toys are now the ones who are still buying them. And I just – we grew up with the Hasbro toys and the figures. Now they're more of these comic book scans, twenty, twenty-five dollars a figure, sometimes thirty, fifty. I've seen them. Um, I remember going in that. Was it KB Toys? There we go. And you could buy two Hasbro figures for five bucks. It was awesome. Now I'm just sorry. I'm reminiscing for the history of toys and collecting. It was good stuff being a fan back in the day for wrestling. I, I know. I'm like picturing. Exactly where it was at Clackamas Mall. Like, I know exactly where it was. It was down towards the end of the mall. It was, like, one of the last couple stores on the bottom level. I want to say there was, like, one more store, like, between – it was either Sears or J.C. Penney. But uh, I remember exactly where it was. That was always the, a fun little spot to stop right there. I mean, it's oh, a yeah, so I'm going to skip over one of the topics. We can jump back here. Rob, I know you got some only so much time with us today, so I want to get into one topic you can get your opinion on this. Just because of what happened with John Cena recently, having to, what some say, bow down, apologize, playing it smart with his money so he doesn't lose money in the uh, the theater market over there. Um, what kind of uh, welcome, what kind of reception do you think John Cena will now get when he makes his return back to wrestling this summer. Mm. After kind of doing the whole, I mean, everyone saw the Chinese thing. Everyone's heard the news, what China has been involved in and what's going on, whether it's true or not, not going into it, but you know, just what people's thoughts and opinions are in the outside world. And John Cena apologizing in Mandarin. Um, I look at it two ways. One is very professional to speak in their language, and then I look on the other side of what are you doing. So, so, so the controversy. You know, let's let's address the controversy first. Okay. Um. Growing up, going back to toys, you get toys to say made in Taiwan, right? You get toys to say made in China. So should I could make the same mistake and think that Taiwan was a country? I mean, so he slipped. He said Taiwan was a country. Honestly, I probably would have had to Google the crap to check it myself. But I'm not the least bit concerned about it. The, the cancel culture and all that crap, they – bunch of babies, man. I mean, maybe they're going to cancel our show now because of this. But it's just ridiculous. So he said, what do you say? Um, let's go. Let's I'm go very, 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 very sorry. No, he said – Very, very, very important. That you need to know that I understand that Taiwan is not a country. When it is, by the way, it, it is listed as a country in this world. It's just one country doesn't see so, them as a country. So the first, so the first statement he made was, Taiwan is the first country to watch Fast and Furious. Right? That's what that's what he got in trouble. For. And then he said, "I'm very, 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 very sorry." <laughs> Why are we upset about him saying that? If he said, oh, it. "Come on." Jesus Christ, this is 
ridiculous. I, I just hey, so they got to watch the movie first, you know, and they're gonna probably bootleg the zombie and probably cost the whole industry a ton of money anyways because it'll be on all forty thousand illegal websites to watch it before it goes into the theaters, just like everything else always is. Um, I don't so, use those, by the way. That is just ridiculous. Yeah, that's you know, it's yeah. Poor. Where, 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 I mean, those, those, yes. Don't don't take away from retail investors buying AMC and then not buying a ticket to the movie. I want people going to the movies to see it. So if John Cena just cost AMC money, then I'm pissed. But if he didn't cost us 492 million shareholders, um, you know, or 4.1 million people, I guess I should say, I, I don't care. It's it's irrelevant. Now, the cancel culture and the WWE fan base two different fan bases. So they're going to give him the same receptive, you know. So is he, he's coming back to Russ uh, Roman, right? That's what he's going to essentially do. That's the talk. That's the rumor, right? Yeah, it's a, there's rumor also that he's going to turn heel finally and get Roman over as a face. So I've seen so that. So, I've, so they may do it contingent upon the uh, response he gets. I mean, this is the guy that got to sit in the in the stands at WrestleMania drinking beer, waiting for The Undertaker to show up. I, I mean, the guy's untouchable. You know, he, as much as everybody hates him, everybody's jealous of him, too. So you're going to have the people boo him. You're going to have the people cheer him. I think you're going to get um, national publicity from it. I don't think the China thing has anything to do with the reaction that he's going to get at SummerSlam. I think he's going to come out to a normal pop that he would get. Yeah. Uh, you know, just like Hogan would get or one of those, you know, lifelong – Guys, if anybody can even see him, I mean, I don't know. You can't see the guy, right? So um, his music may drop, and he may not even be there. But ultimately, I think he's fine. I think he's 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 going to be fine. Yeah, when you hear that, bow, bow, bow. People just go fucking nuts, like just doing that, man. Like this is prime time for him to go home because. He's got the same mirror defect, kind of like the mirror defect of Samoa Joe and Taz's career. Now we got this one where young kids grew up with John Cena. Now these young kids are like my son. My son is 13 years old, and he couldn't give two shits about wrestling anymore. He's all into Fortnite and all his fun little world doing that stuff and making his hair pretty for the ladies and all that. And so now he's an older fan. When he was seven years old, I mean, it, wrestling, he, I mean, he turned around on his birthday and goes, wrestling's my life. And, like, he was a diehard Cena fan. We got to meet John Cena, great guy. The kid broke down afterwards with such a memorable moment. And now he's older. I'm like, yeah, man, like, John Cena's coming back. He's like, oh, cool. Like, I think now there's that good Hulk Hogan turn where we were the older Hulk Hogan fans. are like, all right, this little shtick is getting old now. We're tired of the your vitamins and all that good stuff. It was like, where's the little badass in Hulk Hogan? And that came out. Now can we see the same thing in John Cena? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like with the investments riding on it for him to turn heel and why, promote or go. Yeah, unless he's going to come back and wrestle a full schedule for six months or a year, the heel turn doesn't make sense. It's just not going to happen. It's not. That'd be like The Rock coming back and turning heel. Well, he's coming back, I guess, to fight Roman Reigns at uh, the next WrestleMania. Yeah, but yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty cool. That's, I'm I'm for it. It's inevitable. I, here's what I'd like to see happen. That's what I think, definitely. I, I'd like to see Cena win the title from Roman. I'd like and to beat see him Flair. Win. Flair's that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then lose it back. Pass the baton back to him. You know, get a two-show run, SummerSlam, and then he can lose it right back. Who cares? Check the box. I mean, if you want to compare – the overall impact of Ric Flair versus John Cena. Overall, John Cena has had more of an influence on wrestling culture today. I think he deserves it. I think he does. And you know what? Someone has to do it. It's not going to be Ric Flair forever. And you know what? John Cena is already there and has it. Like, yeah. Uh, and it'll give the belt some prestige again. Like having had John Cena rub will be, a, is, you know, that's never a bad thing. Like yep. whoever wins it back is like, dude, I beat John fucking Cena to win the title. Like that's how fucking good I am. Yep. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm I'm all for it. I think it it 
I think it's a swerve that no one would see. Everybody just thinks that John's going to come back and he's going to, you know, he's going to lose. Maybe it's maybe it's the turning point. Maybe it's that he lo- or he wins, right? And he holds the title for a little bit. Um and then Roman and him wrestle again at Survivor Series. And you know, maybe that's when uh, or maybe something happens with the Usos. Maybe the Usos mess it up for him or ruin it for him, and he loses the title at SummerSlam. And then he spins off with the Usos for a minute, and then The Rock and the Usos go against them or something. I don't know. The other variable that's in play you've got to factor in is that Brock Lesnar is back on the active roster. Yeah, I think he's so going to last. This, I mean, that... That would make sense, right? I mean, the Mac so thing's going on. Yeah, I think they're just going to do it to get it out the way to get everyone to shut up at this point. I see what everyone's wanting is the the big guy versus the big guy. The MMA fighter and the MMA fighter fighting each other, you know, whatever. I just don't see it panning out because of egos. I just don't. I, just not, I know what everybody wants to see. It's like Brock and Goldberg back in the day when Stone Cold referee. It, it ain't going to pan out. I don't think it's going to be good. It's not going to be a technical match. It's going to be a slam and smash. Someone's going to twist the ligament, whatever. It's going to be a 16-move match. match. That's a lot eight, of moves for them. Eight. No, you're going to get eight no, spots, eight eight spots, and then it's going to be over. Yeah. Goldberg saw, makes the run for the one spear. We saw the, the highlight of Brock Lesnar's in-ring career when he did what he did at Royal Rumble. He'll never do that again. He'll never be in the ring that long again. He earned his paycheck yeah. for the first time in his entire career on that day. And it was great. I loved every minute of it. I was rooting for the guy to knock everyone out. But he passed the time to Drew. It was good. It was okay. Yeah, they dropped the Drew thing pretty quick. Though. That's going uh, south and diluted pretty quick. I don't know. We'll see what happens at a Sunday. It's a Sunday. He's so not, hell in the cell. Not, he's not the American guy. He's not. He's he could be from you know where he's from Scotland, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, is Scotland a country? Yeah, yeah. Is Taiwan a country? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's it's. Yeah, I mean, you're you're speaking to the American guy. guy. You're speaking to a British guy right now who could turn around and be like, "How dare you call Scotland a fucking country? That's our land and our that shit." But it's a country, yeah. man. It, it yeah. is. You know what they do? What they want to do in their stinky little shithole. But whatever. But no, I like Drew. Um, great guy. Um, met him when he was having actually a really bad day. Uh, the airline lost his luggage, and uh, dude, he was a nice. Guy, he, there's guys who've lost their luggage before that we've seen because I'm that airport rat, um, and they get pissed and you just don't don't even go by them because they're having a bad day and you don't want to be harassed if you're having a bad day. So I totally understand. And we didn't know Drew lost his luggage. We asked him for a pick and he was fucking like, "Hey guys, what's going on?" And we found we lost his luggage. And we're like, "Oh man, sorry about that." He's like, "Oh, it's okay. I'll show up." He was cool. Did you get um, but, uh, his luggage back? <laughs> <laughs> My son had it. The uh, kids took off with it. Um, so Hell in a Cell this weekend, I got a kind of a big, uh, area for this to talk about. I got some fun facts. One of the I facts I didn't realize I how many Hell in a Cells there have been. Over dude, 40 Hell in a Cells in the last two decades. There, there was one that was a dark match. In was there? Yeah, in 2011, it was a five minute dark match. It was, I think, when... I think Punk was champ. It was, yeah, like September 2011. And, yeah, it was yeah. like a five. I just, I just read about it on Wikipedia before we started. And I'm like, why would they do a fucking dark match? I mean, it was like close to the time of Hell in a Cell, but I don't know why they just set up a Hell in a Cell for a dark match because it was all listed chronologically. Like promotional deal. What's that? It's a promotional deal at the house shows to get more people to buy that pay per view by giving a taste of a Hell in a Cell live. Oh, it could have been a yeah. run through. It could have been a setup to get the ring set up to see how long it takes them to give them a dry run. That's some a good that, point. Some of that stuff's tough to turn. I mean, I, you know, running an mm-hmm. indoor football league, you have to flip a, a, a hockey arena to a indoor football arena was was a challenge. 
only to rip it all back out so a circus could be in town the next day and then a WWE house show three weeks or three days later or whatever. So, yeah, it's tough to turn that stuff. So, okay. Hell in a Cell since Sunday, we've had memorable moments. We've got the Mankind Taker match. What is another match that stands out besides Mankind Taker match for Hell in a Cell for you guys? The Triple H, um, Mankind, or I guess whoever it was, Cactus yeah. Jack, 2000, when he ended his career. Yeah. I mean, you know, ended his career. I'm, I'm, I'm doing quotes, but I have my hands under my... I bought a pregnancy pillow, you guys. Do you guys ever get a chance to get a pregnancy pillow? Fucking <laughs> off. That, that was like a little infomercial prod in there. Wow. Well, so, I, I can see in the comments the, you know, like the link to the Amazon option to purchase, and we'll get paid for that, right? Rusty's yeah. pregnancy I, pillow. $6 for everyone I sell. So, uh, again, the pregnancy pillow. <laughs> Uh, use the code thinking. <laughs> thinking man. <laughs> God, that's a long one. Oh, man. Um, so we've seen what? Kane's debut at Hell in a Cell. Foley has never won any of his Hell in a Cells. He doesn't need Undertaker to. Undertaker won Hell in a Cell. He's won, no. No. Foley has won every Foley. single Hell in a Cell match he's ever been a part of. It may not show on the record, yeah, he beat, but he, he has beat won himself. every single match. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Um, HBK has the best record. Um, the IC belt has never been defended at Hell in a Cell. All the other titles have. Um, yeah, well, Kane's debut has probably got to be one of the biggest memorable things from Hell in a Cell, in my opinion. Ripping off the cage door. I'm glad that didn't go wrong. He couldn't get the cage door off. That would have looked awkward. Yeah, that was And then the the crimson mask on Shawn Michaels during that match was pretty nasty. I think it was one of the better crimson masks I've seen in the wrestling of Hell in a Cell. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, like, there's I don't like, weekends. I don't know too many of the matches just because it's overdone. I know Hell in a Cell used to be in October. I thought it was more of an October event. Hell in a Cell Halloween. Now we're sitting here in uh, summertime having it. Um, you guys know the matches for the show at all? Not to, not to change subjects, but while we're on the topic, can we bring back Halloween Havoc then? Can we bring they back spin, spin the Wheel and Make the Deal? <laughs> we could, except that everybody knows there's somebody behind that stopping that damn wheel now because of the other <laughs> podcast goes telling the secrets. Yeah, I think they should yeah. actually just really, really freestyle it. Actually spin the wheel and really do what it needs to do and see what happens. Hell, I don't care I if they only put four things on the wheel. Just spin it. Yeah. Let's, let's get on well, I like the one that Eric used to do, the Las Vegas one, whatever it used to be. I like that one, and I, that was always one yeah. of my favorite Night yeah. Raws, the Vegas Raws or whatever. But no, how long... I think Hell in a Cell went as far as it could ever go with Mankind and the Taker. After that, that bar is so high to reach in the Hell in a Cell match that getting creative, I mean, everyone wants to see someone throw someone off the top of the cage, and we did that. What's next? Are you going to do it while he's on fire? I mean, that's the next step up. Well, no, the next one was, yeah, when Rikishi did it, and that wasn't nearly as fucking... Oh, to a truck of hate with his padded ass. Dude, and you know what? Horrible. I don't... To say the fucking whole show of Hell in a Cell is bullshit because there's there should be a reason why you're doing a Hell in a Cell match. Like that should be a huge fucking blow off. Like you're gonna you want to fucking kill this person, and it's just like okay, here's this match. We're both gonna be in the cell just because like we're matched up. We have some little there's barely any story, but it's special, man. It's not special anymore with having a whole pay per view. It just seems so well, with, with Sean and Taker, the reason for the Hell in a Cell was so Triple H and China couldn't get in the cage. Right. That was the and whole that's, right. stop that's, outside interference, but still have a wrestling area without, you know, getting rid of the outside area, too, because regular cage matches, you just got the ring. So this was a little different. But, yeah, it's having six guys in Hell in a Cell, you're not really going to have anyone else running in there. And that was with right. the Rikishi match. 
they're taking, like, Hell in a Cell isn't that special anymore. It's the name of a pay-per-view, and what, is there three to four Hell in a Cell matches on this? There's a woman's one, there's a the Roman Reigns, and I'm sure there's, what, Lashley's doing one. I think there's one more. Or are they all Hell in a Cell matches? I think they're all Hell in a Cell matches. So this this isn't live, though, right? We're not getting, or I shouldn't say, we're not in front of fans yet, right, for this? No. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine, because they can get the camera angle. But I'll tell you what, if I had to watch an entire pay-per-view through a fence, like I'm at a Little League baseball game watching my kids play, um, I ain't paying for that crap. That's I'll watch it on point. TV, but I don't want to watch it through a fence from the nosebleed section for 160 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, that's, oh, that's, okay. is there a crowd at this show this weekend too? Because I mean, I know the crowd back we can see. I don't think they. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know, man. And because here's my deal: I was watching the NXT pay per view the other night. I'm trying to get caught up. By the way, guys, I mean, that was so much homework I had to do last week catching up on shows. It was insane. And then I try to do the podcast. Then I jump over to the NXT show. MSK and that Bronson guy together is magic. MSK and Bronson, I don't know too much about them. Awesome stuff. Check out the show. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's too much content like we talked about a couple weeks ago. Hell in a Cell being diluted. We just had a pay-per-view on Sunday. We're going to have another pay-per-view this Sunday. Right. Do we even consider them pay-per-views anymore? What are we supposed to be calling them? Like, because, I mean, no, anyone buying no. a pay-per-view at this point is a whole. Peacocks. Peacocks. Yeah. Peacock views. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I don't know what the yeah. shows. Even before Peacock took it over, they were still calling them pay-per-views because people were spending $60 instead of the 10 bucks. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, hey, per view. Like, you're getting it for, like, you know, who's buying just one show? There's no, like, I don't know anyone who just buys – the one show now. Like, you may as well just buy the fucking network. Yeah. I mean, that will, I mean if it shows... You're half the network now. Yeah, and it's, that's bullshit, too. I, I, I'm really fucking getting upset. I haven't watched much of the network lately, and uh, it's not the network, but, I mean, yeah, it's not everything on it. Like, it's, it's hard, and now... Uh, and I'm watching shit on YouTube. Yep. YouTube Premium is the best investment I've ever made. What do you get on that? Yeah. No commercials. Oh. It's like eleven ninety nine. What's that? Well, oh, now you talk about your phone, though, right? No. Dude, my kids watch every night bedtime shows. It's all on YouTube. It's all logged to my account. And they just sit there and watch it. It's like eleven ninety nine. There's no more in the middle of Blippy trying to put the kids to bed, a, a freaking commercial popping up, blaring in their ears and waking them back up. It's great. Yeah, dude, like when I'm riding on my fucking moped and uh, I'm listening to like an album and it goes to the, before it goes to the next track, there's like a three, four minute commercial and I have to like pull over and like stop and change the fuck doing. I'm like, that, that'd be pretty nice. Yeah, YouTube yeah. Premium. It's it's definitely it's definitely worth it. Um, you, if you can get a, uh, I think there's a student plan. If you uh, have your old student, if you can verify that, I, mine's like eleven ninety nine a month for the regular one person. You can do it on multiple devices. Um, it does get a little convoluted with the uh, history. Like if I'm you know watching this podcast on mine, and then the kids are watching something on theirs, it it will sync it to the device though, so it's not like the recommended. Like mine's all this and AMC updates, so um, it's not like they go in their room for bedtime and they put on the Fire Stick and, and they're watching AMC updates. Although that'd be kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, get them learning fucking early, man. Right, right. And you can down you can download things. Um, you get the free music; it's ad free and background play. Like if you, if you have it on your mobile device, you can minimize it so you could still listen to it while perusing your device versus having to have the window up and accidentally closing the window and then losing where you were at and all that. I don't know. That's, it's that's worth 120 like a, bucks a year right there. Or whatever yeah, that's it is. Worth right there. Just that part yep. of being able to have it minimi- minimized. When you, when you minimize yeah. it, uh, 
Yeah, when you minimize the uh, YouTube, I mean, that'd be crazy. Like, you know, it's so hard. Like I'm saying it too, yeah, like when I'm out riding and I have to leave the thing open, I have to leave it open, and I don't know if I'm going to butt dial someone while I'm uh, riding in my moped listening to Astro Creep fucking... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold, hold it yeah. under your body pillow so you don't lose it. Yeah. With one hand on the wheel, on the steering. I, I, I should bring my body pillow here, man. So uh, I'll bring my body pillow next time I'm riding my scooter when it gets here, man. Uh, that'll be the way to do it. I'll just like tape it, get some uh, maybe some zip ties or something, tie it around my body once it starts getting a little cooler, and I'll be good, man. <laughs> oh my god. I gotta find a body pillow moped riding guy to be my background for their next show. Yeah, right. See, that's why I'm surprised they never made wrestling body pillows. Like a giant Andre the Giant body pillow. What? Wait, wait, wait. Not wait, so much wait, for wait, me. Wait, wait. That's not what I was thinking yeah, we were going to say. I was thinking we were going to talk about, like, I don't know. I won't even go there, but. Yeah, that's. that's <laughs> what... <laughs> I saw Michael with the. Playgirl. That's right, like, let's right. make uh, you know how many so. people inside like, posted on that picture and sent to people? I have sat out there and photoshopped that picture of people's heads so many times. It's great stuff. Um, well, we do got Father's Day coming up this weekend um, with Hell in a Cell. Um, kind of a weird one to put together. Oh, what are you doing with your dad? So I'm taking Hell in a Cell. You know, it's kind of a weird one to put out there. Um, not too much in the wrestling world coming up this weekend, except for that last weekend, or last week, I feel like there was more content coming out. I think we're about to have a dry spell going into SummerSlam. I just feel like there's just going to be no new story shit. We're waiting for Brock or Cena to pop up, and then we're going to ride that wave. Um, you guys want to comment? Any guys watch uh, Dark Side of the Ring for the Dynamite Kid? I said I wasn't going to watch it. They're rusty, and I ended up watching it. Dude, 45, 46 minutes of my fucking life. I'm never getting back. And it's and so, and it took a couple showers. Do you know why he's not in the Hall of Fame now? Because he's a fucking piece of shit. Uh. <laughs> you know me, I'm blind. I don't give a fuck. I'm a fucking asshole, dude. And you see, I'm you good. know what? My top fucking five. Now I got to replace it. You got, uh,. Fucking uh, Steven Crowder with that man. Like, uh, change, change my mind uh, about Dynamite Kid. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I was, I'm not, yeah. uh, I'm not disappointed. Like, I understand as we go along here and we keep talking about these guys as backgrounds and shit, most of them got some pretty dark shit to it. Like, Grizzly Smith, that fucking was disgusting. Just, oh, fuck. The dynamite, yeah. Kid, yeah. man, like, dude, like, okay, I'm I'm a British guy. All that shit grew up with, you know, kind of crazy around my house and uh, having a bulldog in life and stuff like that. Watching that, like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's hopefully next season we can add some. Not, I know it's dark side of the ring. I'm not asking for light side of the ring, but I don't know. It's a little different. Fuck, this one just left me like I need some like. Psycho, like, like, talk to the psychiatrist with this shit, man. It was dark. Dark, dark, dark. Yeah, man, like, and the part with, uh, I had heard the story before with Rujo, with, uh, they talked about it on... I love that part, by the way. Fucking Socks fucking him with the roll of quarters. Yeah, Jeez, on, uh, all of the um, I don't know. That story. And, dude, like, I mean, he fucking, you deserved it, man. Like, he fucking, uh, Bill cosby him without maybe, I don't know, without maybe the other stuff. But, I mean, he slipped the fucking thing in his drink, and I fucked up, man. And Well, and man, I, I appreciate but, the guys who do Dark Side of the Ring, because it's, it, teaches us a lot of shit about these guys and what they've gone through. And some guys, like, 
with Rougeau, I always looked at him as a cocky asshole, whether it was in the ring or out the ring, but now I just really appreciate that moment when he socked him in the fucking mouth. Rougeau went way up a my list, and Dynamite went crashing to the bottom. I just love how that works. It's so funny, and, you know, when we learn about these things. Um, I don't know. It, yeah, it was depressing because, like I said, he was in my top five of all time, and now that this came out, um, I appreciate it. I do. I mean, getting any news like that out there, but... Yeah, I felt so bad for his family. Well, yeah, and then the part where they said that he, um, like, they gave that the Rougeos gave his name to Dino Bravo. And, yeah. Uh, so then they had to, like, the whole family had to move and pretty much stay out of everywhere because they thought they had a hit on them, which they, they maybe at least were, like, on the... He uh, was deep in something. I mean, he was taken out by the mob in the end. So, I mean, he was deep in something there. Uh, I don't know. I uh, wonder how deep Vince is into some shit. Because, I mean, he's up north right next to Canada. Dino was coming through there. rest of some other Canadians and their mafia issues and shit. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, that was surprising, man. Like, you, you got to get money somewhere. Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you put all in for, you know, WrestleMania. Like, I don't know where... And then, I don't know, I don't know if Trump was giving him money or what, but um, you know, those first few years, man, like, that easily could have been some mafia-related shit. And no, there's I'm, some... The you're doing stuff in Vegas, doing stuff with Canadians that are in the mob. There, Vince was doing some. I'm not saying for sure before someone comes at us being like, oh, what? how do you know? But, you know, you look at the picture. Look at the facts, the relations with people. There were some mob ties earlier in the WWF days. Well, when you had the fucking... Yeah. 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 No, um... What I do appreciate about Dark Side of the Ring is that with the new talent coming up in the business, hopefully as they see these things, it makes them more aware of how the promotions were, how they can be, how people can take advantage, and also kind of keep a grip on your own reality, especially with, I guess, in the Dark Side of the Ring, a lot of these non like crazy things are blamed on addiction, I've noticed. Like, oh, if it wasn't for Honky Tonk Man smashing me in the head with a guitar, as Jake says, I wouldn't have had fucking addiction problems. With dynamite, with his abusive ways and everything like that, he blamed it on addiction problems. Like, there's a lot of that. You're born with that. You're You're just triggered by these things. Yeah, yeah. And your dad, you're going to have fucking addiction problems in your life. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I don't think we can always sit there and blame it on narcotics or drinking and things like that. You are your own person out there, so... It's learned from lessons, and it seemed like Dynamite Kid was doing a complete reverse of that. Jake blaming his addiction problems on one guy in wrestling. I mean, look at your career. You were in wrestling, fucking taking headshots with other things, bumping every night, night in, night out drinking. It was kind of a lazy way of an excuse blaming on the honky-tonk man. So just things like that. But I, like I said, I appreciate Dark Side of the Ring being out there because – Hopefully, with the younger talent coming in, except for Velveteen Dream, because obviously he didn't learn anything from Dark Side of the Ring, um, is to just kind of be more aware in any of your careers. You know, people take advantage of you. And we brought that up on the last show that we've been around um, some people and some folks that have had some stories of shitty promotion around probably a couple shitty ones. Um and so it's being more aware, and I think Dark Side Ring does a great job by making people more aware, and hopefully, though, at the same time, not turning people off from wrestling. And that'll be my last topic of the night. If you guys have not heard, or last topic of the day, this is how tired I am right now. And I got a freaking another craziness after this. Ticket sales for WWE. Don't know if you've seen it. It sucks. For the live shows coming back, they are not getting even close to half capacity on ticket sales. AEW, though, is not doing too shabby. Do you think it's pandemic-related and people are just scared to be around other people? Do you think it's a financial thing where people have been out of work and they can't afford to go back? What do you guys think it is? So I think it's in AEW, they run in Florida, 
and people from Florida are fucking idiots anyways. So like, you know, like, what, what are you gonna do, man? Like, I don't know. They were they're they're doing Those Florida shit. The pieces by Rusty Diamond, by the way, for everybody out there from oh, Florida. People, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, no. Like it's. I think, but I don't know. I, I mean, AEW definitely has a better product right now. It's just not as mainstream, but those people that are going, a lot of them are way fucking into it. And they'll tra- they'll travel places to go to shows. They'll fucking drive, you know, 15, 16 hours or something to go to a show. Whereas there's not a lot of, maybe at WrestleMania, people take a long drive for a flight. But, dude, people aren't doing that for WWE right now. Are you saying WWE fans are just not as serious about wrestling as much as AEW, AEW fans these days? No, yeah, um, yeah. I think I'm more than fucking... They're, they're, there's, there's, I mean, the AEW crowd's a different crowd. It's different kind of people for the most part. There's a lot of the fucking smart marks that came over that yeah. were very, very into it, and yeah, you know, it's cool. It's, they're good fans, because they're fucking loyal, but I mean, I don't think that a lot of WWE fans would make that travel. They're not as fucking nuts. Um, but when it, come, when it comes to their town, fuck yeah, they're gonna go. They're gonna go. Uh, of course. But I just, I think that AEW has a better product right now. In Impact, I fucking don't know why I don't watch it. And I haven't really got to watch that or New Japan. Uh, New Japan would rather watch an Impact. What? There's... Slammiversary yeah. sold out in a hurry, didn't it? Be fucking happy. I mean, if awesome, there's that much fucking content. Like, yeah. when something sucks, you'll have plenty to fucking watch. You can go back and hit all the shit. But, like, New Japan, like, most of their shows, it might be the ones that are still, like, like the L.A. ones, like, with uh, a lot of the Americans that are in that. They do shows with in front of nobody, and it's just, I, I can't well, do that. That's how you get your start, you know. What? Is, what? That's how you get your start, really, at any indie show. I mean, you wrestle for two to three people. I mean, but I don't know, I think... I personally think it's pandemic. People are paranoid to be around each other, especially the WWE crowd. And this is going to sound really fucking horrible. AEW crowd, I feel, is more of a grimy crowd, more of a sweaty crowd, dirtier crowd. than WWE fans are more of those, don't fucking touch me, don't get close to me, we're clean yeah. crowd. Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know it sounds kind of snobbish and a fucked up remark to me, but that's how you I mean, watch an AEW show. It's a wrestling show. I mean, I've been to plenty of wrestling shows where I'm sweating and by the end of the show because it's fucking hot in the venue because the AC don't work like they said it was supposed to. But I don't know. Well, what's your take on it, man? Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm taken back by all of that. I'm going to say – I'm going to go back to my uh, – the supply and demand piece, right, first and foremost. I think that for WWE, there's so much airtime that you can overlook a house show, right? Because you can just go watch it on Monday night or on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, whatever nights they're on now. I don't even remember. I think it's like every other night. But um, So you've got that. That's me going to the moon, not you, um, unless you're coming with me. I saw you looking. No, at these guys are trying to make their way through my ceiling. Gotcha. All right, so because so, I got, I got I to gotta jump in the next five, but I'll say this. Um, the supply and demand factor, I don't necessarily know. I think it's the – cancel culture, the I want something different, I want something new. But AEW's not doing house shows, right? They're just going live with their recordings and their tapings, right? right? So yeah. so it's not so it's a different thing. I got a chance to be on T V, I could do all this different things versus I'm at a house show where if you've been to a house show, spoiler alert, you're not gonna have the Titan Tron. You're not gonna have all this big things. You're gonna have like a small curtain and a little video and and that's it. You're you're not getting the experience where the AEW, you're going to get the full experience that you'd see on TV. So the likeliness of having that is going to lead me to do that 
or go on a freaking cruise ship with Chris Jericho and, and booze it up and and listen to music and watch wrestling or whatever. So, so um, I think that that's that's a little bit of the uh, the difference there, right? Is what am I getting from that house show? I'm probably not. I mean, we've had what three title changes at a house show in all the time, but there's always title matches. So Bob Backley Diesel stands out for me when you say that. Yeah, I think there was a Ray yeah. one. I think Ray won it and then lost it back or something. I don't even remember. But ultimately, you know what you're getting into when you go to a house show. You're getting into, you know, you're getting into a circus, a monster truck event, or something like that, where it's, hey, let's take my kids and let's go. Where AEW, you're getting, I'm going to be on TV. You know, I'm. This is new. This is something brand new that I can say I was at. A, I was a part of the movement to be a part of the AEW crowd. Blah blah blah. So I think that's it's unfair to balance and, and judge them against each other that way. Um, and then also you got to look at the seating capacity, right? Where what are they? You know, the places they're going to versus the places that WWE tries to book. Is it the same audience? Um, you know, capacity level wise, or or what the case may be. And then and the other, WWE yeah. should step down on their their building capacities. So, uh, so part, part, of so. part of it is potentially backdoor deals that they have with um, with companies like SMG and things like that, where they're you know they they have multiple venues throughout the entire area that they can book into and, and get into and do different things. It also could be some of the um, locker room requirements, right? Because you can get to a smaller venue and you may not have the locker room capacity that the WWE requires. So, you know, no, that's know. true. There's a lot this of things. This is why we got you here, Rob, is for these analyzations and the way you look <laughs> at that. I, hey, I'm, I'm all about the more, you know, the more the merrier. Uh, I'm cool with the AEW. I think it's great. You know, I think it's been a big win for Threadhead Custom Clothing to have a whole different, you know, place that people want new shirts and stuff like that. So it's been a, a huge win for our business, right? So um, I like I like it. I don't have a problem with it. I, I'm not going to compare. I, I actually unfollowed uh, Brian Alvarez the other day because I got so tired of just seeing the ratings. Who gives a shit? Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't so that's my, that has been my biggest oh, gripe is ratings. We can't do ratings like we used to because everything we saw was through TV. Now we see right. it through so right. many things, so yep. many. Yep. And how do you do your ratings on that, people? Like, how do you sit there and go, okay, so many people watched it through Apple. So many people watched it through USA. So many – how do you do that? So Spencer and Alred doing what they do and – Especially now analyzing from, and I hate fucking people's personal preference, by the way, on shit like this, when he's like, oh, it's a five star, it's a one star. Well, that's because you don't like ECW and I do. So it might be a five star match to me and it might be a junkyard match to you. And when you're doing the ratings, what does that mean to any of us at this point? Well, then maybe we should do ratings, make our own fucking ratings. Make our own ratings. We need the Thinking Man's Pro Wrestling Podcast ratings for matches. We need to do that. So it's not some bullshit. Well, one of our ratings would be WTF. What the fuck was that? <laughs> sure. That's WTF. Be a lot, that rating will be used a lot as of late. I know for sure. Um, I know you got to go, Rob, and uh, we're going to be wrapping up the show in just a couple minutes as well. Um, I got now just a fun little message to go and send to. So um, I think uh, next week we'll be back. I've got a couple hot topics. I know one we pressed the other week was uh, intergender matches, and when we talked about an all-woman show, one topic I want to go into, what if we do an LBGQ, how many ever letters there else are, show, yeah. where you have a transgender show, where it's just you know, the homosexual community, like no straight white guys can be on the show. They, well, have, that, them. they have them. They have them. We'll yeah, have to get deep on that topic next week. We'll do a, an analyzation of smell in a cell, because I'm sure that's how this pay-per-view or whatever we call it this time. I don't know what we call them. Um, and there's rumors that a bunch of celebrities are going to start coming to WWE, and we've talked about that previously. Two of the guys are the Pauls. They're talking about bringing these guys in for a tag team by Royal Rumble. Well, we'll talk more about it next week. It's dumb. Dumb, 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 money, 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 money. And this is where I think WWE over the next year will either sell or become Disney with Vince McMahon. Because it's such, I don't know, the way this is all going, we got to talk about last week. 
selling WWE. I got some more dirt for that coming up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of topics I want to hit. Hopefully, we'll all be back together next week. Um, so Father's Day, Hell in a Cell. Everyone check it out. So that way, when we all jump back, we can uh, do our analysis on the crap that we watched. Because there will be one match out of the whole entire show that we go, that was a cool spot, but that was inspired by such and such. Because no one can be original anymore. Or they can't reach for the brass ring because Vince McMahon says, don't do that out there. Um. So, yeah. Um. Any big plans for the weekends, guys? Before we jump on out of here, I don't. I'm going training, fucking for the wrestling shows. I'm training. Or I'm going today, tomorrow, and the next day. I'm not getting in the ring, probably. But I might. I don't want to. You're gonna get the I, itch. You'll be in the ring. Don't lie. What's that? Don't lie. You you get around the ring. You're gonna get in the ring. Don't, yeah, don't I, I ended up hitting the ropes uh, the other day, and it's dog. Oh. I was like, "Ooh!" It's like one drag off of a cigarette. Uh huh. Yep. I know. <laughs> I just I, keep I, going. Oh, I'll just have one cigarette. Uh, I'm just one day again. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I think the this movie is how we always like to end it. So everyone out there, be good uh, this weekend. Have a good Father's Day this weekend. Watch Hell in a Cell. And like always, everyone, please be good to each other. Do something decent this week for each other. We you know we, we deep dive down these podcasts and talk some negative shit sometimes, make some corny jokes, but at the end of the day, don't go too bad being a negative Nancy, a shitty, shitty Steve. Nothing like that. Just Treat each other well out there. Today is uh, a day that we might not have tomorrow. So, everyone, be good to each other. I am G. I'm, I'm Rusty. <laughs> With this I'm pregnancy R-O-B. Pregnancy. And I'll be hey, seeing you guys next week. We'll see you all next week. Love y'all. Peace out.